Hello everybody, I'm Mike Levin from MikeLevinSEO.com and I'm getting ready to code a project on a web framework called PyGreen, which is a little bit new to me. Even though I already code Python, it's usually under Mod Python on Apache and I'm switching to PyGreen for a few reasons. First of all, while PyGreen itself is not that popular, it's based on the minimal Flask web framework, which actually is popular, and the Mako templates, which are behind the Reddit site and others. And they all sort of come together to create a very PHP-like environment, but where you can use the Python programming language. And another thing about PyGreen is that it can generate static HTML files so that your site can be hosted on a large variety of web servers without relying on dynamic code execution. I was under the impression that PyGreen actually did that by default, but as I'm reading down the page very carefully, and I see examples here where you can insert some of the dynamic code, and this is what ends up being served, and this is how you start the server, it turns out that those static HTML files are not generated until you do this step of executing the uh, PyGreen space gen and giving it an output file. So until you do that, your files really are being served dynamically. So I'm not gonna go back and correct my prior videos, but I'll correct myself here. And if this becomes a load issue on the Raspberry Pi, I'll start taking advantage of this feature of PyGreen and partitioning my site out between the static hosted files and the more program application dynamic files. Now I discovered this issue because I had to make certain key breakthroughs in order to start coding where I needed the dynamic behavior which they always said you could override and get uh, Python code executing when you needed it. So what I did is I took this dynamic template design that they have with the understanding that you can use these pointy brackets uh, PHP style to insert Python code and did a date time test which I'm going to show you right now. This is that aha moment and there's a series of these aha moments that you have to have in order to say success assured. I like to tell the story of the Wright brothers where they didn't know they were going to be able to achieve flight until their gliders were put in the wind tunnel with sort of a scale and a spring on it so that they generated enough lift to overcome the weight of the engines that they were going to require. And that was that success assured moment. So that's what we're trying to get here. I am going to take my index.html and I'm going to uh, copy it. Copy index.html to um, dynamic .html because we're testing to see whether we have dynamic code execution. And so now I have a file that I should be able to reach through my web browser by just typing at the end of this slash dynamic.html. The exact same page serves as expected. But now I'm going to vim into dynamic HTML and I'm going to do some of these things that uh, will prove to us that we can execute Python. The first one is to simulate that exact same example where it's, uh, let's put it in an H3 so that we can actually see it appear and then it goes dollar sign curly bracket uh, 10 plus 20, close curly bracket, close h3. And this is our first test to make sure that we have dynamic code execution. We go back, we do a refresh. And there it is, our number 30. We've got dynamic code execution. Now that still could have been rendered out as a static HTML file according to my old understanding, 
But what I did now is I replaced this with a variable name, the eternal foo. And then I insert some code here using that pointy bracket notation saying foo equals uh, whatever, hello. Close pointy bracket in very PHP style. Save that, go back here. Our 30 should become a hello. Hey, we've got Python. So how do you check to see whether that's a static file being served or actually dynamic? Well, instead of uh, foo equals hello, go into insert mode, knock that down a line. For readability, we'll knock this down a line too. We are going to import date time, which gives you some neat little things you can do. Uh, foo equals date time dot date time dot uh, now, I think. And then foo dot uh, ISO format. Let's see if I get all that right. Be a miracle. Hey, yes. Okay. So now that could still be static. So we do a refresh. Nope. It's dynamic. We are serving dynamic content. So it's a two-edged sword. On the one hand, I'm not going to get quite the incredible ability to sustain a load on a Raspberry Pi in its exact current form that it's published as I expected. But on the other side, I've got Python in a very uh, PHP-like web development environment. And that's good. But it's not just Python that you get, it's also the Mako template system, which is very powerful. And in fact, in the first paragraph of the PyGreen site, it says, with the good features of the Mako templates like inheritance. So that got me thinking, well, templates, inheritance, I've been using this include file approach that dates back to the beginning of things on the web. And uh, what is this inheritance? So I went to the Mako website and I found this example. In practice, it looks like this. So you've got an index.html file, but it's inheriting from base.html. And here's base.html. Here's a header block. It's self-terminating, so there's nothing in the header. But here's a footer block that has the opening. This is the footer and then the closing block. And when you make a file, you can just throw in some text by itself, which would take the place of the self.body, or you can override the contents of the header. So you see how this says, this is some header content. The header in the template is empty, but the footer has, this is some footer. This is the footer. So if you scroll down to see how that's gonna render, the local file that you created is going to override the header and insert this is some header content and then the default one will be used for the footer and the body goes in here. The upshot of all this is that you don't need a bunch of include files. You only need one template file. When you just start throwing text into something that inherits from your template, it'll automatically go into the body area, but then you can uh, selectively override areas of the template in order to insert your titles and metas. And you don't have to in, uh, include all these includes. Uh, you can achieve what I just did with like four or five files with just two files. And I like that and I'll be switching over to that. Okay, I just went ahead and did it, sparing you an excessively long tutorial. Suffice to say that this file is now called new.html and it's an exact copy of index.html as far as appearance, but it now looks like this, and it inherits from base.html. 
which previously was dynamic.html, which I recycled for these purposes, inserting all these blocks. So for head, here's the beginning of the open page, and there's the end of it. I basically took each include and inserted the text file back in the middle that it was referring to. Right there, that was the contents of openpage.txt. And then I put that body tag in the middle, that self.body tag in the middle. By the way, here's ZZ uh, recenters uh, Vim based on where your current cursor is. That's a great way if you're too close to the bottom and you want to show something in the middle of the page. Uh, ZZ will just do that. Now one thing I didn't do so that I can show you uh, a little bit of how nice copy and paste can be between text files and, and Vim, I didn't bring over the tracking code. I deleted the include file to it. Um, so let's do that. Tab E tracking.txt. Now to copy the contents, I just do Y for yank and then shift G for bottom of page. And you can see at the bottom there, bottom left of this video, it says 21 lines yanked. Now I can quit out of that and I can go to where this should be inserted, probably beneath the footer, uh, not on the index.html, but on base. Right before close body, where everyone says this stuff should go. P for paste, and there it is. My tracking code is where it should be in the template. Escape colon W, uh, I'll keep it loaded, and we'll look at this to make sure that the tracking code is getting into new.html. View page source, go to bottom, ah, tracking code, close out of that tab. Now we really did a lot of crazy stuff with the files. Um, a lot are not necessary. Uh, the index.html is not really our good index.html anymore. It's now this new.html. So do I spare you guys looking at the cleanup? No, I don't. I make you watch it. Quit. Quit this other one. Quit this other one. Three tabs, three quits. Clear this. LS. See the files in the directory. Well, what is no longer necessary? Well, the index.html, by the way, still uses them. So let's take care of that first. So I am going to um, temporarily, just for preservation's sake, git move index.html to temp.html. Git. Uh, oh, so new.html is not tracked by git yet, so I can just um, use the operating system to, to move that. Move new.html to index.html. Now we git add index.html. So now our, our home page should be back. Let's uh, take a look at that. Make sure people visiting here are not being met by a blank page. So far, so good. Now we can safely remove our txt files. Uh, and they are tracked by git, so it's git uh, rm and uh, close page.txt git rm footer.txt git rm body.txt git rm header.txt git rm tracking.txt ls many fewer files are still open page git rm open page.txt okay now let's do a git status a lot of things deleted modified and one new file so let's add git add 
base.html. Now Git is at least aware of everything that's kind of out of sync, right? So it knows everything that happened. So let's do a, uh, there's nothing to add, okay? But there is to commit. Git commit message switched to Mako in inheritance. Okay. Wow, nine files changed, 92 insertions, 72 deletions. This is a big update of the system. Git push. All pushed up. And just uh, to reassure myself, we go back over here and do a refresh. That home page is still being served and all those include files are gone and we are using that template system. It's almost amazing, so amazing that I just need to do one more reassurance or assurance. Clear, ls, vim index. Yes, that is that incredibly short uh, page. We'll just put a hello world. Make sure that what we're doing is in fact what we're doing. Yes, wonderful. Well, thanks for joining me for this long but necessary tutorial. Remember, the things you do at this outset of the project colors the entire project forever forward. So if there's these great little goodies sitting in there in a framework you're using, the ones that like define the awesome features of the framework itself, like this inheritance did for Mako, take the time to figure it out and use it. And thanks for joining me. Please share the video and don't forget to subscribe.